Hello, uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, this is uh, the end or this is the last session of the uh, ERSA uh, Congress, the 16th ERSA Congress. So we have quite a sophisticated uh, agenda this afternoon because we have a few things uh, very uh, important uh, to do. First, uh, we'll have a, a few words of opening by Eduardo Adach, the president of the Regional Science Association International. Then Roberta Capello, the editors of Papers in Regional Science, will present the Martin Beckman Award with the winners, especially Raquel Ortega. Uh, then uh, Frank von Hort, the president of the Epinos Award, will unveil the results of the Epinos Award for this year. Um, afterwards, Isabel Thomas, the president of the uh, ERSA Prize, will present the ERSA Prize and will present the, the winner uh, of uh, the ERSA Prize 2021, who is Juan Cuadrado Rura. And then uh, Juan will uh, deliver his keynote speech under the chair of uh, Isabel. Uh, and then, in order to finish, Andrea Omizzolo from the LOC of this uh, Congress will pass the baton to uh, the president of the LOC of next year's Congress in Pech, Zoltan Gall. And Zoltan will present the, uh, the Congress in Pech and he will also display a video uh, of, uh, about the Pech Congress and the Pech City. And then to finish, I will come back to you with a few uh, words of uh, acknowledgements. But first of all, I give the floor to uh, Eduardo Adach, uh, president of the Regional Science Association. I'm very, very pleased to welcome him here. Okay. Thank you, André. Um, um, dear members of the Regional Science community, dear friends and colleagues from URSA, on behalf of the Regional Science Association International, I would like to congratulate my friend André and the whole ERSA management team for organizing this fantastic event. Having witnessed the resilience of our community in the last 18 months, I'm very confident about the future. We have testified how adaptable we are to new circumstances. Suddenly, we had to reinvent ourselves once we are forced to avoid contact and social interactions. Technology played an important role the tools were av already available to us and compared to other professions, our transition was relatively smooth. Most of us experimented with existing technology, technological advances that we had to refrain from using before the pandemic crisis. In my view, the regional science community has engaged, engaged positively in various activities during these times of stress and ERSA has played an outstanding role in the, whole press, in the whole process when, one year ago, they embraced the challenge of organizing a large scale online Congress, showing to all of us that we could also benefit from alternative formats and approaches. We are constantly learning from previous experiences and what, what we experienced this week has reinforced my admiration for the Earth and Network. I'm very optimistic optimistic about how I see us moving on after we get back to what people call the new normal. We have learned to use digital technology constructively. However, more than everybody else, we are fully aware of the benefits of face-to-face -face interactions. Because of that, my view is that the benefits from our forthcoming conferences and workshops will last longer. People, people will put more value on the networks which were fundamental to make life go on during these two years. Almost everybody I talk to in our community is eager to return to in-presence conferences with different ideas on how to enhance the benefits from this forced digital experience that enlarge the, uh, to enlarge the menu of options for interactions, aiming at generating stronger connections, longer lasting collaborations, and long-term multi-institutional research projects. A final point that I consider deemed important is the need for all RSAAI members from URSA, NARSC, PRAS, PRESCO, and LARSA to recognize themselves, themselves as true members. 
the association offers many advantages to go that go beyond access to our journals and reduced fees in congresses. Increasing members' awareness will help, help will help further development to develop, develop a sense of community belongingness that may motivate many young regional scientists to engage more broadly in the association. There are many forms of participation, and we will, together with the Ursa management team, make sure you all take advantage of such opportunities. Please receive my very best wishes, and I look forward to meeting you all in presence in the forthcoming events of the association. At the latest, I hope to see you next year in Hungary. Thank you very much. Grazie mille, Bolzano. Ciao. Thank you very much, uh, Eduardo, for these very uh, nice and encouraging words. Hopefully, and for sure, we will meet uh, all together in a uh, patch next year. And now I give the floor to Roberta Capello, uh, the editors in chief of Papers in Regional Science for the uh, prestigious Martin Beckman Award. Thank you, Andre. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a real pleasure, uh, beyond all the duties that an editor-in-chief has to do, this is a very pleasant one, uh, which is to deliver to uh, friends, very good friends and colleagues, a, a very important uh, recognition uh, of the best paper that was published in 2020 in our journal. The competition went uh, greater because further uh, enlarged because we have many more papers that have been published this last year. So the competition was even harder. Let's say give a let's say a, a, a background of this of the of the paper of the of the award. But first of all, the award is as I said a, a recognition for having uh, published. Uh, a very good and very highly cited paper, even if this is, was published only one year ago. Uh, the jury is composed of three uh, may very important and uh, distinguished members of our community, uh, not only European. Uh, we have Janet Cohales from the US, then Rickman again from the US, and Jauke van Dijk from, uh, the from Europe. Um, and this year, as I said, the, uh, co the collection of paper, papers that could have won was much larger. And uh, in fact, the jury did not reach a, a unanimous, con let's say, this decision because there were many good papers, but of course, uh, uh, voting with the democratic, in a democratic way, we turned out to have a very good uh, winning paper. And so I am delighted to present it. It's uh, entitled Optimizing Entrepreneurial Development Processes for Mass Specialization in the European Union. The authors are, this paper is co-authored by, sorry for the pronunciation, eh, Laszlo Zreb, Zerbs, uh, Rachel Ortega Argiles, Zoltan Ach, and Eva Komlosi. I will, write I will read shortly the motivation provided by the jury. Uh, it says, through an elegant scientific approach, the paper this demonstrates how the Regional Innovation and Development Index, called READY, uh, can be used to optimize local entrepreneurial discovery processes in a manner which can support special uh, support smart specialization strategies. The analysis clearly demonstrates that without optimizing the entrepreneurial ecosystem, the, in the industry specialization alone may not be successfully uh, successful because of the inability of the ecosystem to nurture high growth ventures. With its results, the paper strongly suggests that regional improvements can be achieved by reinforcing the weakest features of the local entrepreneurial ecosystem, an important suggestion for the successful implementation of a smart specialization strategy. If I manage, uh, I uh, show quickly, uh, let me see, uh, how can I do that? Well, I wanted to show, in the meantime, we have here the two 
uh, winners, and I would like to open, if I manage, I put it somewhere, the, um, the, 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 the document that testifies this, but I cannot find it now in my, in any case, I am pleased to uh, welcome uh, Rachel, which is here to, who is here to uh, get the, the award, uh, which is both a nice uh, document, which I cannot find any longer, uh, and also some money to go out for a nice dinner with the co-authors. Uh, so Rachel, the floor is yours. Mm. Well, I have to say that I'm very pleased that uh, Laszlo uh, is also joining me. Uh, so uh, um, ah, I think, also... yes, uh, um, so we both, uh, uh, and also on behalf of our co-authors, uh, Sultan and Eva, we are um, thanking the um, Regional Science Association International um, and also uh, papers in regional science, uh, as well as uh, the jury uh, the members. And as well as the editor and the reviewers who help us uh, to shape uh, the paper and uh, manage to have a very, very nice piece that is um, the culmination of a work of a team that has been working together for a few years uh, in different projects. And um, so this is a, a very, very um, happy situation for us. And, uh, and we are very glad that, um, that the jury considered that uh, this was a uh, a good paper uh, to have uh, the Martin Bergman uh, Award 2021. Uh, Laszlo, maybe you want to say something else? Just a few words. Uh, thank you very much, uh, first, for uh, receiving this kind of uh, award. I think it's uh, very good when you publish uh, your paper in a prestigious journal. But it's even better when you get some kind of feedback uh, that you are on the right track. So, and I hope that uh, this kind of research uh, will be continued not only by us, but uh, uh, some, uh, also by uh, uh, others. It's a, as a, this paper has a long history and uh, as uh, uh, Rachel knows, uh, so we had uh, some kind of uh, quarrels and uh, problems during that one. But I think that uh, it has gone through many uh, uh, circles of uh, reviews and uh, thanks also for the reviewers uh, that also supported our paper and helped us uh, to reach this kind of price. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, in the meantime, I found the certificate. Here it is. Did you get it or should I send already to you? Should I send it to you? Was this, this already sent to you or not? Not yet, no. Not yet. So you see, it's there. I don't know if you can see my screen, but I will immediately send it to you, Rachel, so that you can distribute to your co-authors. Uh, so congratulations eh? and thank you very much to Elsa for giving us the opportunity to share with the audience this moment, this important moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much and congratulations to Raquel and uh, also to Laszlo and also to Zoltan, who is a very good friend of mine of the past. And um, now um, we turn to um, uh, an award uh, which is very uh, important for us. Uh, it's the Epinos Award. Why I say that it is very important? Because it is devoted to the work of young researchers. And as you know, we devote a lot of attention uh, to uh, the young researchers. We had uh, dedicated programs to that. And what most of them are led by uh, uh, Vice President of ERSA, Evelyn van Leeuwen. And uh, one of his program is the uh, Epinos Award. So this year we had a total of uh, nine parallel sessions devoted to young researchers. And it was very uh, important when we hope to, to do better, even better next year. And uh, the, 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 the president of the Epinos Award is there, but the new fresh president is Frank Van Hort. And uh, Frank will unveil us the, the, the results and maybe the debates around the, the best papers uh, which are concerned by the Epinos Award. So please, Frank, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, André, and, um, and hi to everyone. Okay, um, selecting the best paper of young scientists presented at the ERSA conference uh, for the Epinos Prize is, is a very honorable tradition. So the future of regional science is with young researchers, as André said, 
And uh, from this year's submissions uh, to the prize, I can actually conclude that this future looks really bright. Because the quality of the papers was uh, extremely high in terms of relevance of the topics for societal questions, the grounding in theory and relevant literatures, uh, the soundness of analysis performed, uh, the validity of results and the organization and presentation of the papers, uh, and the innovation contribution to the field. Because those were the criteria uh, that the jury actually looked at uh, for the Impinos Prize. Uh, and these criteria were met uh, by many of the long list of the 15 submitted praise, uh, papers. So I want to make beforehand a very big compliment to all the submitting young scholars for keeping up the high, uh, the high quality. So to identify the winner of the prize, uh, many good scholars were actually involved in giving their professional opinions. So the chairs and discussions of the sections where, uh, where the papers were presented, they gave their detailed opinion uh, on the criteria I mentioned. And I want to thank uh, all the reviewers. Um, your help is really much uh, appreciated and we could not do without your, your input. Uh, every paper was also evaluated uh, with the same rigor by at least two members of the Epinus jury. Uh, in the first round, uh, and this jury consisted this year of um, Rosella Nicolini, uh, Vasilis Celios, Patricia Melo, um, Michael um, Wirwich, uh, Thomas Stevenader, um, Ketty uh, Kopik Zaveska, um, which was also the secretary of the jury, and myself. So this all resulted in a short list of six papers. Uh, and actually those were evaluated in the second round by all the jury members, and then we had to rank them. So the quality of the papers uh, sparked a well-fueled debate in the jury because uh, we had to debate on so many good papers. Increasingly um, empirical oriented papers used very much state-of-the-art identifications methodologies like um, panel models, difference and difference estimations and uh, regression discontinuity designs linked to very original urban and regional questions. We actually applaud these developments uh, as it shows that um, causal inference is regarded very important by the young sciences and they, they put it on top of their agenda. It also unites various uh, seemingly varying dif disciplines like regional science and urban economics. They grow more together uh, in the submissions we saw. At the same time, um, methodological rigor rigor does not automatically guarantee novelty, theoretical and conceptual progress, uh, or a full view of the policy implications. Regional science research is very demanding, and it also wants to know something about these issues, about qualitative research, and about indeed very good interpretations. So we also looked for those aspects uh, in the papers as well. Well, the, the jury made the ranking of the papers and ended up actually with two winners, because we could not decide about the last two uh, which one was better. So we have two winners that ended uh, ex equo for the prize. Uh, and I will introduce them uh, one by one. It doesn't mean that uh, the order of presenting means anything. It's just an alphabetically order. Um, well, one of the winners is um, um, Benoit Digeri for the paper Impact of European Cohesion uh, Policy on Regional Growth When Time Isn't Money. Well, this paper is at the core of regional science, testing the hypothesis that a fast regional absorption speed of structural and cohesion funds by regions may not be beneficial for regional development. So the paper uses a regression discontinuity design with heterogeneous treatments, and this uh, hypothesis that it might not be a good idea to implement uh, policy very fast is actually confirmed for a very large group of more peripheral regions in Europe. The outcomes are robust to changes in specifications, sample composition and outcome variables. And the conclusion of the paper actually questions the general incentive of the European Commission to fasten absorption of the funds in all regions in Europe. So the paper is very well embedded in the literature, uses state-of-the-art estimation techniques, finds important results, and contributes to the important discussion of the impact of policy on regional development. So we think that this paper has a very high potential in finding its way into the research field. The other winner is um, Nadia uh, Matsiuk for the paper Thrive, Survive or Perish, the impact of regional autonomy on the demographic dynamics of Italian Alpine territories. So this paper um, analyzes whether the uh, autonomous status of a region affects the demographic dynamics of its mountainous areas. 
The analysis uh, relies on spatial discontinuity regression techniques and links more favorable population dynamics in uh, autonomous regions convincingly to the fiscal autonomy and decentralization debate. Although the paper explores cases in northern Italy, its implications are very valuable for many other regions. It can be derived and applied elsewhere in various institutional settings. The paper explores a very interesting idea, is innovative and convincing in its methodology, and dares to nuance its own outcomes even by introducing in the concluding remarks a so what, a so what question. So, what did the, um, uh, the research actually contribute? So I want to uh, congratulate uh, both Benoit and uh, Nadia with the Epinus Prize 2021. I do not have, like uh, Roberta, an example or uh, how it looks like, but I'm sure it will be sent to you. We also decided uh, on these uh, two winners uh, this morning after a fierce debate. So I wish you both uh, very good luck in your future uh, careers. I think normally I would now shake your hands and wave at you, uh, but probably that's not uh, uh, what we're going to do for a while yet. And maybe we do that next year in Paris. So thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Frank. This is a uh, congratulation to the, to the winners, of course, because we had very, very good papers this year, as I had. And um, um, this, the, we, this is very important for us regarding our policy uh, for young researchers. So in the upcoming year, we'll have two uh, schools. So we'll have a, summer, a winter school in January in uh, Varso uh, about quantitative uh, methods. And then we will have, and have a summer school in Caen uh, this, uh, in June uh, about circular economy. And uh, of course, uh, I, I'm sure that a lot of young scholars will apply and will make candidatures for these uh, for these two schools. And we have the project this year; it proved to be impossible, but we have uh, due to the conditions. But we have a project to 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 to, to put all together these um, uh, uh, Epinos winners, of course, of 2019 and 20, uh, 2020 and 2021. And also the participants of the summer and winter schools all together to organize a joint event uh, about uh, around young researchers in Patch. So let's see if we'll, uh, we can do that, but uh, hopefully we can do that in the future. Uh, now uh, we have to pass to another award, another ARSA award. At ARSA, we only have two awards one is Epinos, and the, uh, the, only, the other one. So the most important, important one is uh, the ERSA Prize. And the ERSA Prize is quite prestigious, um, uh, high price, I think, arguably one of the most prestigious ERSA awards of uh, RSAI. And I will uh, leave the floor to the president of the uh, uh, ERSA Prize, Isabel Thomas. And she will uh, present the ERSA Prize, she will present the winner uh, of the ERSA Prize, and then we will come to a conference by the winner of the ERSA Prize, Juan Cuadrado Rura. So, Isabel, the floor is yours now. Well, um, thank you very much. It's a pleasure and an honor to introduce this 2021 ERSA Prize. I will first give a few words about the prize and its mechanism so that it's clear for everybody before presenting a short laudatio of the prize winner. So the ESA Prize in Regional Sciences recognizes since 2003 outstanding regional scientists at the European level. This means persons that are considered as examples not only in terms of research and publication records, but also for their contribution in society and for their implication in the regional science community. So the ERSA awards the prize based on the recommendation of an independent jury composed of six scientists selected for their good network within our society. Four are based in Europe, Michaela Bachmann, Uwe Blin, Rachel Franklin, and myself. 
and two represent the other parts of the world, Eduardo Haddad and Geoffrey Hewings. Well, the jury acts independently and tries to be as objective as possible. The jury jointly composed shortlist, which this year consists of, of seven renowned and recognized regional scientists. Each jury member independently graded these seven candidates according to the three aforementioned criteria, research, society, and regional sciences. All seven candidates, of course, graded very high, and Professor Quadrado Rura ranked first. So in the name of the prize committee, I'm pleased to introduce and deeply and sincerely congratulate Professor Juan Quadrado Rura as the recipient of the 2021 ESA Prize for his outstanding contributions in regional sciences. He impressed the jury not only in terms of his bright ideas and scientific productions, but also in terms of his involvement as an analyst and advisor in policy, policy issues. Professor Quadrado Rura held academic positions in applied economics uh, at the Spanish universities of Barcelona, Malaga, Alcala, and Madrid, but also visited several universities in Latin America, in the United States, and in Asia. His research are anchored in his research areas are anchored in the analysis of the service sector, regional realities, and economic policies in Spain and in the EU, and more particularly social and territorial inequalities in the distribution of income, poverty, and un or unemployment. He developed several methodologies in regional and service analysis. And this is illustrated by the countless publications and citations of his books, handbooks, and papers published in prestigious journals. But beside his academic activities and responsibilities, he remarkably also acted in Spain as the Secretary General of Transport, Tourism and Communications, or the president of the Advisory Council of Privatizations. He was also a consultant, an expert for various well-known international organizations, such as the European Commission, the OECD, the Asian Development Bank, or the World Bank. So last but not least, his contributions to the regional science community are also remarkable. Let me simply mention that he was a former president of the ERSA, 95-99, and a founder and a former president of the Spanish Association of Regional Sciences. So the committee was very impressed by his career and is proud to award him today. We are also very happy that he managed to prepare a keynote in such a short time lapse. So on behalf of the other member of the committee, I'm very happy to congratulate you and give you the floor, Juan. Well, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Isabel. Uh, well, uh, as we say in Spain, uh, and I assume in other countries too, uh, gratitude is a sign of good upbringing. Uh, therefore, I would like to start by thanking the jury who have selected me for the ESA prize and the colleagues who have proposed my nomination. Uh, I was completely uh, aware of it. And I'm quite sure that there are and there were, there are excellent candidates to be awarded too. Second, I would like to thank the ESA organizing committee, the president and all 
committee members, as well as the colleagues attending this uh, session. And third, I am particularly grateful to my most director, director uh, collaborators and the numerous PhD students who have worked with me. Uh, they are the ones who have always inspired and fueled my efforts. And they are also the ones responsible of any possible merit and I have accomplished. As you possibly know, uh, my professorship was called Economic Policy and Applied Economy. And some of my concerns included not only territorial issues, but topics on the European Union problems and the evolution, my country's economy, Latin America, specific problems and trends, the service industry, national accounting, and a few more. Uh, I honestly uh, don't think it's worth commenting here my possible contributions to the development of regional research or any such of these fields. I will leave that to your good uh, and better uh, judgment. However, uh, perhaps it should be uh, relevant or interesting at least to explain my, why I have focused my research and academic activities on regional issues, and as well as on other economic and social problems. So I will focus my speech on two key points. First, the reasons that have guided my work, always oriented by the key interest in social inequalities. And second, what I have learned about many years of academic life, research activities and practical work, as well as some periods assuming political uh, responsibilities. Let me talk first about the main reason that have guided my work. I wish to point out that my main inspiration has always been the deep concern about social inequalities in terms of income, poverty, unemployment, life conditions, equity, etc. This concern pushed me to search for explanation of the real world and the problems I observed around me. This has been without doubt the main driver of my research, both at the general and regional level. Many years ago, I met mine something I had, uh, I read uh, about Af Alfred Marshall. In his book, Economics and Economists, the novel laureate, Ronald Coase, summarized some ideas which I share with. Alfred Marshall, writes Coase, had come to economics because he wanted to help in elimination poverty and enhancing the equality of men and men's life. The economic system, which Marshall studied always, had this concrete character. It was a system who, leaving the work office or the library, one could observe outside. It was the real system, according to Marshall, that one had to explain. Professor Matt Blau has pointed out that the muscle, muscle principles still have a power to fascinate readers. And one of the main reasons for this lies in the Marshall's definition and the objective of economics, which was the key motivation for his work, contributing to improve the welfare of society. This goal was also part of the work and policy proposals of one of his followers, uh, Arthur Pigou, who categorically state that the main motivation of economic relations analysis is to contribute to social improvement. I will, I will always share these ideas and indeed uh, they have probably inspired my work and research and well as well as everything that I have been able to develop with our team and also everything I continue to do. Uh, my access to the university was not easy. 
For economic and family reasons, I have to combine my studies with work. I believe this was actually very positive for me, as it forced me to develop a sense of self-discipline and inner drive that I have later grateful for and which has enabled me to overcome challenges through tenacity and consistency. In my graduate and postgraduate studies, there were two topics which I found particularly attractive. The applied side of economics, that is economic policy particularly, and the direct relationship between the problems analyzed and some ethical principles. As I have taught before, I am professor of applied economy and I was always very aware of the vocation of social science to towards action. That is towards the search for solutions to solve real problems, as Professor Edward Carr stated in one of his excellent books. As social scientists, we must produce theories, of course. We must use also the available models, techniques, and quantitative instruments. But at the same time, we should also take the time to stop and reflect on the relevance of the topics being studied and their connection with the concerns of our current citizens and societies. Nevertheless, I look to the articles and papers produced along the last decades and show too many examples of highly sophisticated research publications dealing with topics of little or no social relevance. I think it's necessary to pay more attention to the relevance of the topics analyzed in terms of interest for our societies and not so to the sophistication on the, of the analysis itself. In one of his later works, uh, Gunnar Middle underlined the intrinsic relationship between science and praxis, or if you prefer, between theory and action. I do absolutely agree with this, but Professor Mirdo also argued that researchers can't and shouldn't ignore their projection toward the praxis with the objective of offering solutions to the society problems. This goal entails engaging with our current society and doing so based on our ethical principles. We should always start for, uh, from a rigorous uh, analysis, of course, and a theoretical background. But as Amita Sen states, this can be made more productive, more effective by paying greater and more explicit attention to the ethical considerations that shape human judgment and behavior as well as the real concerns of individuals and society. I'm not completely confident that I have always respected this criteria in my work, but I have no doubt that I have always attempted to. The best proof is in our publications, not only mine, but with other collaborators, on regional disparities, interregional conversions, labor and employment trends and policies, the analysis of the efficiency of regional policies and their instruments, the location of new activities, etc. I, as I said earlier, I don't want to comment on any contributions I may have made through my research. Instead, I prefer to focus now my attention on what I have learned in my life as professor, as researcher as well as when I have assumed some position of political responsibility in my country. The lessons I have learned are undoubtedly numerous, but I would like to highlight five specific fields in which I have learned and or consolidated my convictions. I will explain them in no specific order, of course. First, I have learned that I shouldn't settle for the results obtained in any research project or analysis. We should always project 
or uh, we should always raise new doubts. We must ask additional questions and explore new alternatives in our research. In the analysis of inter of interregional conversions or diversion, for example, the use of various techniques and methods from fail uh, and other indices, sigma beta approach, etc., have enabled to offer interesting approaches and trends on the evolution of regions. But their analysis usually takes as reference some singular variables, GDP per capita, employment, productivity, etc., which may not be sufficiently significant. In these fields, I have clearly, clearly learned that any simplification should be doubted. We must employ more complex and varied indicators, figures, and techniques to reflect the evolution of, of and conversions, or the lack of it, in terms of healthcare, education, living conditions, jobs, etc. And I confirm that there is that or there isn't always a clear relationship between rich and poor regions in terms of income and the representative levels of other aspects of territorial inequalities and their dynamics as neighbor effects, for example. This is also observed and we did when second level inequalities are analyzed as well as in other fields of regional analysis, such as localization, diffusion of innovation, the relationship between industry and services, etc., as we have proved. Second, I have learned, or if you prefer, I have understood much more about the limits of economics in the analysis and knowledge of the reality. The economical analysis has pro progressed enormously in recent decades. There is no doubt about it. The incorporation of new statistical, mathematical, and econometric tools has enabled research to make great qualitative leap. However, I think that for some years now, economists, including those of us working on regional topics, should have been more critical with the direction taken by what today constitutes the, maist the mainstream of the economic science. Some contributions seem to have as their unique or main priority to be published in high impact journals. These impact ratios often don't actually mean that the impact refers to a topic which concerns citizens or which facilitates a better understanding of the phenomena affecting all of us, or that it seeks to solve them. As all we know, those impact indices reflect essentially the citations received, which in many cases move in rather closed circles. In this regard, I will recommend you read the article by Nobel Prize Paul Romer, the travel with economics, possibly you know it, which includes a harsh criticism on many colleagues and their theoretical contributions, started with important assumptions and simplifications. Third, I have learned and relearned that economics has very clear limits in, the, in its understanding of interpretation of reality. This is true in general, but it becomes ever clearer in regional and territorial studies, where a multidisciplinary approach is absolutely necessary. This was and should continue to be the key identity feature of regional science. However, in our sections and activities in general, the role of economists has been widely broadened. And I am convinced that this is not so positive. In all projects I have held, I have discovered the excellent contributions that other researchers and professionals have made, including geographers, sociologists, legal experts, and others. Four, I have learned and consolidated 
the fruits and advantages of teamwork and the need to support younger professionals by incorporating them all our, in all our research projects. I was always um, sought to bring together teams supporting PhD students and younger professors. In my time in the University of Malaga and Alcala in Madrid, I have shared with them projects, publications, and also leisure time. And I have learned very much from all them from their initiative and skills. I fortunately, many of them currently hold now academic positions in various universities, both in Spain and Latin America. And this, make, this makes me feel deeply proud of them. Thanks to their collaboration, we open up new paths in innovative and social fields. And this has been particularly evident in the field of regional studies, but also in the analysis of the evaluation of economic policies, accounting and input output, the pioneering look on services industries and or the manufacturing service relationship. All of this get an additional important component and a clear idea, fostering international connections, visiting other countries and universities, increasing international links, not remaining boxed in our uh, on one nation or in the academic world, which many times is uh, or was very close. Fifth, finally, I have learned that our academic world also has trends and fashions, which shouldn't always be followed. We have at all witnesses now how some topics suddenly attract all the attention. The fast rising quite similar to what happens in fashion, higher styles and other social preference. Regional studies also see waves of fashions, including, for example, endogenous development, industrial districts, poles, clusters, the role of creative class and creative industries and topics or approaches linked to innovation and the localization of productive activities. The popularity of such topics or new and renewed concepts generates numerous uh, contributions which centrally have had innovative elements. The result has been a concentration of papers, books, and conferences related to those fashion topics. But soon afterwards, the attraction tends to become dilute without completely disappearing, falls to a lower level, and is replaced by the next novelty. Against such waves of fashions, I believe I have learned to discriminate and value the positive elements in each way for research trends, but remaining on a more solid and permanent ground. I don't want to go on much longer. My words aim uh, simply to reflect, on the one hand, my personal approach to, towards studies and research both in the regional field and others. And on the other hand, some of the things I have learned in my career as an academic and researcher. In this regard, I believe I have always respected three principles. First, remembering that my field economics is a social science and therefore it shouldn't be expected to be comparable to hard sciences. Second, maintaining that research and works should always follow reality, which in regional issues is particularly straightforward, and be focused on contribution to understand and improve the citizens' well-being. And third, to be always aware of the relationship between economics and ethics, standing related to the personal level and the relationship with collaborators. As I pointed out earlier, I must confess that I am not sure I have always respected these three principles, 
but I would like to believe that I did. Both in the research I have conducted with my colleagues and in my dedication to ERSA and Regional Science International, driving the entry of new countries and sections, launching new, new publications and the EPA Inos Prize, for example, organizing multiple scientific activities and other initiatives that is projects, congresses, workshops, etc. I can only say you that I will continue to do so and that I'll always be at the disposal of the organizing committee, as well as anyone who asks for my help or collaboration. Once again, thank you very much for this prize and thank you for attending my talk. It has been much more personal reflections than a simply academic contribution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan, for this inspiring testimony. Are there questions? Maybe I will have one, maybe I was, uh, um, I was touched about your multidisciplinary approach because I have, I am very um, sensitive to it too. What would you have some advices in how to succeed multidisciplinary? Because I think it's a word that is often used, but the success of, of it is much difficult. So, what would be your advices in this direction for young researchers that would start? Uh, well, uh, it's not an easy uh, uh, problem, but uh, we have to confront it. Um, first, I think an effort, a great effort must be made to approach Again, geographers, sociologists, planners to our ERSA, our regional science international, and not so ending to be a kind of economist uh, association. Uh, from the beginning, regional science is a multidisciplinary approach. And this must be uh, conserved and support, etc. Um, then, I think the topics uh, uh, of the uh, seminars, workshops, um, summer uh, schools, winter schools, etc., uh, must take this in, into account and uh, trying to, to attract young people, but not only from the uh, economic side, but from other uh, approaches. And uh, this depends in part of um, how we diffuse these activities. And on the other side, um, how we present the problem we are interested in analyzing in a summer course or in a workshop or in a congress. Possibly we could start to, to open a, a great dialogue about all this, but these uh, two few uh, words may perhaps be sufficient. Thank you very much, Isabel. Congratulations anyway. I don't see any further question. So I leave the floor to the president, André. Yes, thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you for the splendid work realized in the uh, ERSA Prize jury. And thank you most of all and congratulations to Juan for uh, his career and also for the very inspiring words uh, today. So Juan, we count on you for the future as well. Thank you. Uh, now uh, we are we are slowly slowly moving to the end 
uh, of this session. And so we have to, to talk about uh, the future congresses. So um, I will pass uh, the I will pass the floor to uh, Andrea Omizzolo of the LOC uh, and then to uh, Zoltan Gan for the future congress. So Andrea, first, the floor is yours. Thank you, President, dear colleagues. It's for the second year I am attending the closing ceremony of our Congress on behalf of the local organizing committee. Last year I announced our intention to again try to host the Congress here in Bolzano in Italy in presence, but unfortunately for the second time the pandemic made it impossible. <laughs> Too risky and our local regulations are very, very strict. So we are very sorry for that. But let me thank the staff, the president, and all colleagues of ERSA, uh, the president of ISRE, our national section, my colleagues in EURAC, the staff of the Chamber of Commerce here in Bolzano, and all other local supporters in Italy. Our intention was to meet you in person, to show you our beautiful land close to Dolomites in the Earth of the Alps and so on, and of course, our research center sharing our ideas and projects with you and spending some nice moments together during the breaks and the evenings. However, we supported the ERSA staff for both online congresses in 2020 and 2021, and we are very happy and proud of that. We want the best of our common European association, and we are sure that we will have other opportunities in the future Maybe, maybe I will propose Bolzano again in the next years, <laughs> maybe. Now, my position is very strange uh, because I'm not really having organized the Congress physically, no? And I have to pass uh, the baton to Zoltan. <laughs> uh, I thought the best uh, witness would be a good bot bottle of South Tyrolean wine. Mm. So, dear Zoltan uh, and dear Hungarian colleagues, I officially pass the button to you digitally, and we will drink this goodness together in patch with the president next year. Zoltan, this is yours, and also thank the floor. Thank you very much. So, thank, thank you, you very much, much uh, Andrea, uh, for uh, your position. And this year, we organized the Congress uh, at ERSA, but you were always willing to help us. So we really, really appreciated that. And now, um, Zoltan, it's your turn to work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Andre. Uh, we definitely uh, would support uh, the repetition of Bolzano as a, as a future venue of these congresses. So dear colleagues and dear Congress participants, we are closing a very successful conference. Indeed, despite the extraordinary framework conditions, which Andrea mentioned, and its online format. I would like to, first of all, congratulate to the local organizing committee, to Andrea Omizolo and Roberta Capello, the head of the Italian section, and the ERSA team for putting together all this successful event. As one of the last moments of this year Congress, I would like to invite you to the 61st as a Congress, which will be held in Page, Hungary in 2022. The general theme of the next year Congress deals with disparities in a digitalizing world, which also includes the challenges of the post-COVID era. We approach this topic from the aspects of networks, entrepreneurship, and regional development. Both the list of the keynote speakers and their proposed lectures are very promising. Besides the keynote lectures, we will organize uh, three roundtables on different themes, including development challenges of the European regions, the importance of entrepreneurial ecosystem in regional development, and the role of networks in and across regions. I hope we can finally organize a traditional on-site conference in combination with hybrid solution, giving opportunities with overseas uh, participants as well. Honestly speaking, no online conferences can be the same as real on-site events, as Eduardo said it before. 
you can feel this, for instance, during the sessions when you hear the signal and the session technically ends in the midst of the conversation. And also the social programs of the Congresses are essential parts of the ESA brand. As we learned today from Andres Rodriguez Pose, social interactions are the best way to fight against loneliness. So without the welcome reception, the get together party and the gala dinner, which provide also active networking opportunities, no conference can be considered as business as usual. Page is a historical city and UNESCO World Heritage Site and the former European capital of culture offers excellent venues for this Congress and providing many of program opportunities also for uh, participants. Finally, I would like to invite you to watch our short promotion film of the next year Congress and encourage you to attend to the conference. Together with the scientific uh, co-chair of the 61st Annual Congress with Zaslo Serb, I warmly welcome you to Page. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, on behalf of the University of Page, Faculty of Business and Economics, I would like to kindly invite you to our university, where the 61st ESA Congress will be organized in August 2022. Since its foundation, our faculty keeps its leading role both among Hungarian business schools and internationally, acknowledged by the prestigious EFMD accreditation of our business bachelor program. Pech serves as one of the main hubs of regional science in Hungary. The local department of the Center for Economic and Regional Studies and several research groups at our faculty play a leading role in the scientific community of regional science. Their joint work in the local organizing team will provide a professional background for the biggest European event of regional science in 2022. The general topics of the 61st ESA Congress deal with disparities in a digitalizing world, which also include the effect of a post-COVID era. We approach this point from the aspect of networks, entrepreneurship, and regional development. The invited keynote speakers are leading researchers of these fields. They will shed light on various aspects of disparities in their lecture. Besides the keynote lectures, we will organize roundtables of different themes including regional development in Central and Eastern European regions, the importance of entrepreneurship ecosystems in regional development, and the role of networks in regional science. On the behalf of the local organizing committee, we believe that the scientific agenda of the 61st ESA Congress provides an attractive and fruitful event for regional scientists worldwide. We previously organized several prestigious conferences in the field of uh, regional and from Budapest on the highway and several intercity train will transport the conference participant to Page within two hours. Page is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Two of the European Cultural Capital flagship projects from 2010, namely the Zsolnai Culture Quarter and Industrial Heritage Site, and the Kodai Center, the second largest conference and concert hall in the country, will also be the venues for our conference. In addition, the surrounding countryside referred to as the Hungarian Tuscany, offers plenty of options for organizing conference tours, visiting its historical and natural sites, thermal baths, and famous wineries. We are looking forward to hosting the 61st ERSA Congress and warmly welcome you to Page. So thank you very much, Sultan. For sure, we will struggle to be there. <laughs> we struggle to be in Pech. You want to warm me back, come and... As a community, we definitely want to be there and to make it the place to be uh, next year. We will do our best uh, to that. And now we are really close to the end. 
So I, we are, I think we are very, really, very happy uh, with the ASA community and uh, with the ASA team. We are very happy to have uh, organized this Congress. Um, seven keynote, um, three round tables, um, 200 parallel sessions, seven, 700 presentations, 800 participants. So for us, it was really, really, really a huge effort. And it's uh, now we are really reward by this success. And to, we are very proud to have done this uh, online. And we, so we are very, very happy to that. And I want uh, to just to finish to acknowledge, uh, of course, to acknowledge the, the keynote speakers, to acknowledge the participants of the round tables and the organizers, of course, to acknowledge the participants and the presidents of the Epinos and the Yasa Prize. And also, but most of all, of course, I want to acknowledge all the attendees and the participants of the 16th Sasa Congress. Without them, it would, have, uh, it would have been possible to make this Congress and to make it uh, a success. And just to finish, of course, I want most of all, really most of all, to thank the people who have helped us and who have organized the Congress. So, of course, Iraq and uh, Andrea uh, for his very friendly uh, partnership. But most of all, most of all, I would say, Maristela Angozzi, Nurul Barriero, and Eric Valdener from the VRSA team because they have organized this Congress. So thank to them. And I really want to- Thank you. To applaud them because <laughs> you've been great. You've been great. And so you didn't have any holidays, but okay. <laughs> but it was for the sake of ERSA. I really, really want to thank you because ERSA has been, has proved to be resilient. ERSA has proved to be uh, successful. So thank you very much. And now for everybody, that is the end of this story for next year. And really, let's see next year in patch. Bye-bye. <laughs>